Drawing this happy illustration with confetti animation is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. Well, this video is really, really special because it is to celebrate the channel hitting 100,000 subscribers, which is totally insane. And to thank you guys for being part of this journey here with me, I made a few little special things in this video. So we're gonna have a pretty cool giveaway later. We're also going to have a free confetti brush and a other few little secret things hidden along the way. So make sure you watch this video until the end so you don't miss any of these celebrations. And with that said, we are going to start. So the first thing we're going to do as usual is we're going to create a canvas so we have some more to draw. For reference, these are the dimension of the canvas that I will be using in this video for the demo. This is just the size of the iPad screen, but make sure you find something that works for your own project requirements. And if you're not exactly sure how to pick a canvas size, I have a video you can watch in which I teach you everything you need to know in order to make a decision. Now, there's one little thing that you need to keep in mind though. If you want to export your animation and use it on social media, your canvas needs to be not too big. So for that, I recommend staying smaller than 3000 by 3000. If you're in that range, you should be totally okay. So once you have your canvas, we're going to start by doing a super, super rough sketch of the character here. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer, rename it to sketch, and you can use really any color of your choice to do the sketch because we're not going to see it in the final result. I'm going to go with just a neutral gray. Now in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different kind of brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate and it's going to allow you to follow along just fine. And the other brush is going to be a brush from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. These brushes are going to help you save some time, get maybe a little bit more refined texture and overall get a more professional feel to your illustration. But again, they are definitely not essential. You can for sure follow along with free brushes. If you want to check mine out though, they will be linked in the description below and there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. Now in terms of free brushes, you can use for the sketch, well really whatever you want because it's a sketch. I recommend in the sketching panel the HB pencil or if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and use the sketching brush. Now here, we're going to start, like I was saying, with a super, super, super rough sketch. So if you're able to draw stick figures, you're fine. <laughs> we're going to start with the head, so just a kind of circular shape at the top. And then we're going to draw the spine, which is a basic line like this. Super simple. You can see nothing crazy so far. Then for the body, you can draw a rounded square or rectangle that is going to be roughly the same size as the head. Nothing precise still, but you can see this is going to be the chest. And then for the pelvis, you can draw a half circle at the bottom of your square. And that half circle is going to be half of this head circle. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Once that is done, you can draw some little ovals on the sides of the pelvis. This is going to be where we attach the legs later and some little ovals on the top of the square, which is where we're going to attach the arms. So you can see in my example here, the arms are just kind of a U shape, nothing super angular, like we don't even have elbows. So you can draw this U shape as well. And then just two rounded triangles at the top of the arms for the hands. For now, that's precise enough. So for the legs, we're going to draw just basic lines. Again, think stick figure, nothing more precise than that for now. And I like to draw the front of the leg. So something a little bit like this. Now here, make sure that the top and bottom of the legs are the same length on both legs. <laughs> Once you have that, you can just go in and flesh out the legs by drawing some ovals that are the same length as the little lines that you've drawn. So something a little bit like this. And again, we've drawn the front of the leg, so your oval is probably going to be on the other side. Hopefully that made sense. If not, make sure to peek at the video. We're also going to be doing the same thing on the arm, but since we don't have elbows, it's just going to be one big uh, like pointy oval, I guess. You can also sketch the feet. So I'll do just usually very simple rounded rectangles at this stage. And then later on, we're going to refine everything, of course. <laughs> but for now, something like this is okay. 
So I'm not going to go into too many details about the facial features in this video because we're drawing closed eyes and stuff like that. But if you want an in-depth video about how I draw cartoon faces, I have one. <laughs> that is exactly that. So we'll link it in the description below if you want to check it out. For now here, all we're going to do is we're going to draw some sort of a plus sign on our face circle to mark the horizontal and vertical middle of the face. So that's going to be kind of the direction of the head, I guess. Now you could keep it as a round, but I like to do this sort of a like S-curve bean shape on one side of the face. I don't know, that's how I always draw my characters. And I also like to draw very, quite big, honestly, circular ears. So one side is going to be this S-curve and the other side is going to be where we see the ear. But again, feel free to draw any style that you want for your face. I'm gonna draw closed happy eyes, so just a little curves like this on the horizontal middle line. And then just another little curve, but on the vertical line this time for the nose. You can also draw a big open mouth, so something super simple like this. It's kind of like a, a B, you know, a lowercase B that you would tilt on the side. There you go. <laughs> you can also go in and map out some cheeks, something just a little bit like this, so basic ovals, as well as a little eyebrows to give your character even more personality. And for the hair here, well, you can draw me if you want. This character is kind of a cartoon version of me, but I really encourage you to draw yourself or someone else than me, I guess. <laughs> so for the hair, you can draw whatever hairstyle you want. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. And in terms of hair, I like to start with just roughly mapping out the hair, either the hairline or if it's longer hair, just kind of how the hair falls on the face, just roughly mapping that out. And then I go ahead and roughly sketch the general big shape of the hair. So without thinking about the hair strands or anything, I just draw kind of like if the hair was a towel on the head of my character, just roughly where it's going to be. So here, since my character is jumping and the hair is really long, I want to have some movement in the hair as well. So this is kind of going to be roughly the shape that I am drawing. But you could totally draw a ponytail, very short hair, curly hair. I have a few hair tutorials. I will link them in the description below as well if you want. But for now, honestly, something super rough like this is more than enough. And believe it or not, this was probably by far the hardest part of this entire tutorial. So if you made it to this point, you're good to go. You can finish this up. Now we're going to go ahead and clean up our rough sketch so we actually have a good idea of what to color in. And for that, I like to flip the sketch horizontally. So just using the arrow tool and then clicking flip horizontal, because that gives us a fresh look on our sketch and we're going to be able to see what's wrong just a bit easier. And if you do find parts that you don't like, for example, I see that this leg is a little bit longer than this one, just slightly, you can use the selection tool, sending it to freehand and making sure that the color fill option is deactivated. You're going to be able to just draw a selection around a part of the illustration you want to change. And then using the error tool, either setting it to uniform, um, to resize uniformly without changing the proportions or distort if you want to uh, change the proportions or the angle of your limb or any part that you selected to be honest you're going to be able to fix some problem areas before going in and cleaning up the sketch you can also use the distort tool on the entire sketch to maybe change the angle a little bit so here take all the time you need fix some problem areas and once you're happy with it we're going to go ahead and clean up our sketch now for the cleanup, I like to create a new layer above the sketch layer, but before that I also lower the opacity of this sketch layer until I can just barely see it, so something a little bit like this. And then yeah, that's what I was saying, creating a new layer. This new layer you're going to rename Clean Sketch. And on this clean sketch layer, you can draw with the same color since we lowered the opacity of the base sketch, or you could go ahead with a darker version of your gray, really a personal preference here. And seriously here, this is super, super fun. You're gonna go over and pick which line you're gonna go with. So in general, this is a really good workflow when creating illustrations, doing a very, very rough sketch with super basic, simple shapes, because that way you're able to very quickly map out your character and very easily move the different shape around to, for example, change the angle of the leg or something like that. And once you have a rough sketch that you like, well then it's very easy to go back in and find your lines. So finding what you actually want to use for your final illustration. So that really helps save a lot of time while also just helps you creating characters that are a little bit more fluid, have more movement than if you were to try and draw the real final line 
from the start that that is just so 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 hard it's much 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 easier to break down your character in very simple basic shapes combine the shapes together and then create a character from these shapes and when you're finding your line there's really no right or wrong way to do it. it's really just a personal thing just going over and well finding your line trying to be as fluid as possible so you can see here i'm not really erasing if i do a stroke that i don't like you're much better just undoing it and redoing it because when you erase you kind of create a bunch of individual little segments and that doesn't look as fluid in the final illustration it looks a little bit more static and just not as good overall so just draw very loose lines undo retry instead of erasing you're gonna get usually just better results in the end and while you're working on that, we're going to talk a little bit about the giveaway. Now this is, like I was saying earlier in the intro, this is a very special video because it's the 100,000 subscriber celebration. I still cannot believe there's that many of you listening to me ramble over to drawing tutorials. Like, it's, I, I seriously cannot believe it. When I created the channel just over a year and a half ago, the first 100 subscribers I got, I... It took me days to understand that people actually, you know, cared <laughs> for what I, what I do. So I, I really want to thank you all. And for that, I decided to do a bigger giveaway than usual because I, I do brush giveaways, you know, fairly regularly now. And one comment that I see quite often is people asking me to do tutorials for um, like free software, which. I personally, I don't know if I'm ever going to do those because, you know, Procreate is the software that I, I really like and most of my tutorials can be followed along with any kind of software. As long as you have layers, usually you're totally fine. But I thought, you know what, it could be nice to give away some Procreate downloads, I guess. So for this giveaway, there are going to be three grand prize winners and then five second prize winners, I guess. So the three grand prize winners are going to get Procreate. So it's going to be an Apple Store gift card that's going to allow you to download Procreate, as well as every single bundle that I put out so far. So a bunch of brushes as well as Procreate. And then five other winners are going to be able to pick whatever they want from my store. So they could get the big brush bundle, the illustration bundle, the portrait bundle, anything they want. They can pick one and I'm going to send them the link for that. And the way to enter the giveaway is super, super simple. If you've watched my videos before, you know that at one point in the video, there's going to be a secret password on the screen. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the secret password and you're going to comment it both on this video, so on YouTube, as well as on Instagram on the post that is going to look a little bit like this. And it's really helpful when people, when they comment on Instagram, they also had the YouTube handle that they have so that I can match the comments and really make sure that you comment on both platforms. Otherwise, I cannot count your your participation. That being said, if you don't have Instagram, you can just write on YouTube that you don't have Instagram and I'll still count it. <laughs> I just want to be fair with everyone. But if you have Instagram, make sure to comment on Instagram as well. <laughs> and the winners, I will announce them on Instagram. So in my story on the date that I will write on the screen right here. So just keep an eye for that. And keep an eye out as well in this video for the secret password so you can enter the giveaway. But for now, we're going to keep cleaning up our sketch. I have a few tips I want to give you for the legs. Now, it can be a little bit tricky drawing legs that don't look like just straight sticks. What you might want to do is alternate between straight lines and curves. So what that would mean is, for example, the front of the top of the leg, so the thigh would be curved and then the back would be straight and the opposite for the bottom. So the front of the bottom part of the leg would be straight and then the calf would be curved. So you get something a little bit like this. Now you can see it takes two seconds, but the leg looks so much better than when it's just either straight rectangles or pure ovals. So we're going to apply this technique to the legs here. So top of the thigh, super curved, and then bottom straight. Then front of the bottom part of the leg, the shin, I guess, uh, straight, and then the calf curved. So here, take all the time you need to finish your clean sketch and we're going to meet in the next step. We're going to start adding the colors. So 
So once you're happy with your clean sketch, go ahead and select it as well as the base sketch and you're just going to flip them back. Now, since this is a little bit more of a complicated illustration, you might need to adjust some stuff again. So every time we flip, it's like we get a fresh look. Here, for example, I'm noticing that the hands are just quite different. So I'm going to use my selection tool and arrow tool to just fix everything a little bit so that the shapes are a little bit more like what I want them to be. So here, take again all the time you need to do as many flips as you want until you get an illustration or I should say a sketch that you're really happy with. And at this stage, it's really a question of personal preference. You could go ahead and hide the base sketch to only work with a clean sketch. I personally like to keep the base sketch because I like seeing the construction line. I think it's really helpful when shading. You kind of see the volumes a little bit better, but I like to really lower the opacity so it's just barely there. And in that case, you can merge the clean sketch and the base sketch layer by just squishing them with two fingers like this. Awesome! So with that, we're ready to start adding the colors to make this look so much better. It is really easy, such a simple, relaxing step. So grab a cup of tea, maybe a little bit of chocolate, whatever you want to be comfortable. And we're going to start by just sketching basic shapes to fill in with colors. So for that, I like to change my sketch to the blending mode multiply and then lower the opacity until I can just barely see the sketch. Now multiply is going to help us still see the sketch on darker colors, although we lower the opacity. Once that is done, go ahead and create a new layer, put it below the sketch, and on this one we're going to, well, just simply draw the skin. So we're going to rename it the skin. And in terms of color here, I know skin colors can be quite intimidating, at least it was for me when I started drawing, I was just so scared of picking color skin because it never looked right. But for now, just pick something that roughly looks fine and we're going to tweak it later if needed. If you do want to learn more about skin tones though and how to paint skin on cartoon characters, I have an entire video dedicated to that, so I'll link it in the description below. For now, I'm just going to go with that. And in terms of brushes, you can use in the airbrushing panel the hard brush, making sure that you lift the opacity of the brush back to 100% if you follow my watercolor videos. Otherwise, if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the base round brush. And here, super simple, I told you, it's really not a complicated step adding the colors here. You're just going to go ahead and outline your entire character. Everything that is skin, you're going to outline so you can later fill it in and create the silhouette of the skin. So nothing crazy here, but make sure you take the time to have really nice, smooth lines. Now again, it's not a complicated step, but it needs to be done well because otherwise the final result is going to look a little bit weird. And just like when we were creating our clean sketch, here it's quite important to try and not erase. You're much better on doing and redoing your line than erasing a little part and then trying to make the flow work. So in general, when doing illustrations, especially digital art, because it's kind of weird sometimes drawing on a screen, try to just draw everything in one big line or every curve in one big line and undoing if necessary, but just try avoid using the eraser. Seriously, it's really rare in my tutorials you're gonna see me use the eraser. I know it's quite hard when you first start drawing. You're so tempted to use the eraser, but really, this is probably one of my biggest tips I would give you. Try to avoid using the eraser when using digital art. We have the luxury of being able to undo. Please <laughs> use that to your advantage. So you can see here, we're just drawing the basic silhouette, so something a little bit like this. Once you have the skin, we're going to do the same thing for the other big elements in the illustration, starting with the shirt. So create a new layer above the skin, because the shirt in real life would be above the skin as well. Rename it to shirt, if it's a shirt, if it's a dress or something like that, you know, uh, you wouldn't rename it to dress. You can use your own judgment here. I don't know what I'm telling you what to do. But yeah, then you can pick whichever color you want. It really doesn't matter. We're going to fix it later anyway. I'm going to go with roughly this yellow. And same steps here, just outlining your shape the best you can and then fill it in by using the uh, autofill or color drop feature from Procreate. If you're working in a different 
digital art software, the tool that you're going to want to use is probably going to look like a little paint bucket. That's usually the icon that they use in digital art software. So once you have your basic shirt here, what you can do is going in the adjustment panel. So this here at the top, sorry for the shaky table. And then using the hue saturation and brightness on the entire layer, you're gonna get these three sliders here at the bottom. So the one on the left is going to allow you to change, I guess what we would call the color, but really it's the hue. Then saturation is going to be if your color is super bright or gray. And then the brightness is going to be, is your color very dark or very light? So here you can basically change your colors and see if there's something that you like. So this is a really nice, easy way of building a color palette without having to figure it out, like just before drawing your character. Kind of figuring out while you're drawing your character is so much easier. So you don't have to know what you're going with before seeing it. You can do it while seeing it. I'm gonna stick with this yellow, but here, feel free to use whichever color you want for your shirt, obviously. And we're going to do the same thing for the pants. Now the pants, again, you can use whatever color and then fix it using the hue saturation brightness tool. Here, I'm gonna go with this kind of charcoal color because I only wear dark charcoal pants. <laughs> Usually that's kind of my go-to, so I'm not gonna even think about it. And here, when you're outlining your pants, make sure that you connect the line uh, where the body is as well so we don't see it because of the shirt but if you don't do this line when you try to fill in your pants shape it's going to fill in the entire canvas because there's going to be a hole in your outline so just make sure that you also connect behind the shirt and here's same steps you know it by now you just outline your shape and then fill it in Now, one thing that I really like when creating basic silhouettes like this is you get a better feel of for what your illustration is going to look like. So sometimes something that looks right with sketching lines is going to look wrong with just the silhouette. So make sure that you tweak your silhouette as much as needed so that your character looks right. And then we're going to do the same thing for the hair, the socks and everything. So here, you know the drill, just creating a new layer. The hair is going to be behind the skin because the face is in front of the hair. And same thing, you can pick whatever color you want for the hair and the socks. The socks are going to be on the separate layer as well. I'm going to stop talking, let you focus on your illustration. You know the drill, all the big elements or the main elements, you're just going to separate them on separate layers, separate them on separate layers. Wow, <laughs> you're just going to draw them on separate layers, just the basic silhouette. And once you're ready and have all your elements together, we're going to move on to adding a little bit of color variation in the hair, for example, and then adding details, shading, all of that good stuff. So once that is done, it's a really good time to change your background color as well. Here I'm going to go with a pretty solid background because we're going to have the confetti. I don't want to have too much going on. I'm going to go with just this uh, blue color. Now if you're struggling to find a color that works well with your background, I recommend just color picking the color you use for the brightest article of clothing you have. So in my case it would be this yellow here. And then going in the harmony tool, so in the bottom of the color pick selection, you're going to have a few options here at the top. Now I like to go with the complementary, and that's going to give you the color opposite on the color wheel. So in this case a blue. And then you can go back with this blue in hand, you can go back to the classic tool and play with the saturation and the brightness of that color. So as long as you don't touch the hue, you're going to make sure that you have a color for your background that works well with at least the brightest, most intense article clothing in your piece. So you're going to get some sort of a coherent palette there. Now I'm going to go with just the blue that I had in my history because I know I like that blue. <laughs> Now before moving on to the details, there's one little thing I like to do which is adding a little bit coral variation in the hair. 
So for that, you can use, well, making sure that your hair layer is selected, that's very important, but you can use the selection tool, again, set to freehand, to do a selection towards the bottom part of the hair. That one might have been a little bit high, something a little bit like this. And this works especially good for long hair. If you have very short hair, don't do that. <laughs> but then you can feather your selection, depending on how long the hair is, you know, maybe around 20, 30%, you're gonna see it on your screen. Basically, you're going to be creating a gradient in your selection and then going back to our trusty hue saturation brightness, you're going to be able to change the color of the hair so that there's a gradient so that the hair is not just like one solid color. So usually the bottom part of the hair tends to be lighter. So here you would just, for example, lift up the brightness and maybe play with the saturation a little bit, but you can see it adds a lot more life to the illustration. You could also do it on the roots, but I prefer doing it just on the bottom. So we're making really good progress, but this looks a little bit boring. <laughs> we're going to add a bunch of outlines and details to really spice it up. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer above your shirt layer, probably below the sketch. So above all the colors, but below the sketch, basically. And this one, you're going to rename it to either outlines or details. Here, I'm going to go with details because we're also going to be drawing the facial features. So, you know. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. And here in terms of details and outlines, you could go with whatever color you want. You could go and have really thick black outlines that are gonna look like comic books. I personally like to have colored outlines, so I'm gonna go with a darker version of my pants right now. But later in the next step, we're going to recolor the outlines so that they match different elements of the illustration. Now, in terms of brush, you can use in the sketching panel the 6B pencil, or if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the outlines brush. And here, all you're going to do is create some outlines around the different elements of your character. So nothing crazy here, but once more, make sure you take all the time you need to get smooth lines. So try avoiding erasing, you're much better undoing and redoing your line until you get something you like. Now here, as you can see, I sped up my video because there's, you know, no secret here, but I think this is a really good time for the secret password. So if you've watched this find the video and if you want to enter the giveaway, the secret password that you're going to comment both on this video and on Instagram, this time it's going to be a little bit more of a prompt. I want you guys to share with me and with the rest of the community something you did recently that you're really proud of or just something that happened that makes you really happy. I want the chat or the chat. I want the comments to be super positive and happy. And I know sometimes there are phases in life where, you know, life is just harder and the thing that you might be the most proud of is actually putting pants on that day and that's totally fine if that's your case if you were just proud of putting pants on rock on <laughs> go ahead and leave a comment about your pants totally okay so the thing about secret password it does a few things well it allows you to enter giveaways when i run giveaways but it's also really cool because it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better which helps me to create better tutorials for you guys and ultimately isn't that all we want <laughs> great tutorials. So that's a really cool thing about it. But a really, really, really even cooler thing is that you guys know me, you see my face in the intro, you hear my voice throughout the entire video, but I have no idea who you guys are. And whenever you leave a comment, I get to see sometimes your name, sometimes even your face. And yeah, it's just so special for me to see the wonderful community that we're building here on this channel. So just leave a comment with something you're proud of or something that happened recently that just makes you really happy so that we can all celebrate in the comments. For me, it would obviously be that we are now 100,000 people here on this channel, which is so, so, so crazy. So yeah, and don't forget to comment on Instagram as well if you want to enter the giveaway. And with that, we are going to keep drawing our outlines. You can see here I'm working on the face. A few little things on the face. When you're drawing the mouth, I highly recommend if you want to have an open mouth like this to not draw the, th the tongue. So just leave a little open room for the tongue. And for the eyebrows, I like to just roughly kind of sketch them in so it looks a little bit like hair. So something a little bit like this. Now take all the time you need to draw your outlines and draw as many kind of details and texture as you want. For example, I like to always go back in and add some little lines in the hair to show the movement. So just, you know, random little scribbles, I guess. Uh, nothing too crazy. But yeah, feel free to take all the time you need. You can pause the video, work on your outlines, your details. And once you're ready, we're going to move on to the next step in which we're going to recolor them so that they blend in a little bit better with the rest of the illustration. 
So once you have your details and outline ready, we're simply going to recolor them by activating alpha lock. So alpha lock, you can activate it. Well, first you can also hide the sketch so that you can actually see what you're working with and double check that everything is fine. But yeah, once that is done, you can activate alpha lock by either swiping with two fingers towards the right on your details layer or just tapping on the layer and manually activating alpha lock in the menu. And what alpha lock does is now everything we draw on this details layer is going to stay within the outlines that we already drawn. So that way you can just go ahead and color pick, for example, the color of the shirt, make it darker and then just brush over the shirt outlines. So you're going to do this for all of your outlines, just color picking the basic color, making it slightly darker and then just brushing over your shape. Now, once more here, you don't need me to just be talking all over you. I'm just going to stop talking, let you focus. You can put on some nice music and just do all of your outlines that way. And then we're going to meet up in the next step in which we're going to add a little bit more coloration in the face and then start shading. Awesome. So once you have all of your outlines recolored the way you want, you can go ahead and deactivate alpha lock again, just swiping it the layer with two fingers towards the right or deactivating it through the menu. And then you're going to pick some sort of a, I guess, salmon pink to fill in the gap that we have for the tongue. So you can just color drop it. And if you want, you can also add a little bit more light. So just a lighter version of your pink over the top of the tongue to make it look a little bit less flat. So something super simple uh, and super rough, kind of like this. Now, I noticed that I had a little bit of a color mess up here on the fingers, so I'm just going to fix that real quick. And then we are going to add a little bit more of that pink that we use for the tongue on the cheeks, on the nose, and on the fingers to make it look a little bit less like our character is um, dead. <laughs> so for that, we are going to activate alpha lock on the skin so we can quickly paint and stay in with just within the shape. So again, just swiping it with two fingers towards the right or manually activating it. And then you can color pick the pink that you use for the tongue. So just holding your finger on the color is going to color pick it. And with the same brush, you can then just go over and really smoothly brush over the nose, the ears and the cheeks. So something a little bit like this, you really don't need to be more precise than that. We're going to do the same thing over the fingers. So yeah, and you could skip this step if you want. I really like it because I, like I was saying, it makes the character feel a little bit more alive and less like a, a zombie or something. But if it's not your vibe, totally fine, just skip it. But if you do that though, make sure that you also go ahead and recolor the outlines around the face and the fingers. So you might need to reactivate the alpha lock on your details and just make your pink darker. And then just brushing around the cheeks, make sure that you don't recolor the shirt and the hair like I was doing. So the cheeks, the nose, the ears, and the fingers are going to be needing a little bit touch up um, if you want to add the colors like I did. Now, if you made it this far, I just want to give you a little round of applause. I know this is a long tutorial, but you totally got this. We're going to start shading the character to make it look so much better. But before for that, you might want to create a group with all of your layers. So just swiping them towards the right with one finger and then creating a group by clicking on the group option. You can rename this group to character and within the group, so above the details, you're going to create a new layer that you're going to rename to shadows. Now this layer, you're going to apply it as a linear burn blending mode and you're going to load opacity around 40% but we're going to tweak it later. 
Now for your shadows, you can use whatever color you want. Just try to avoid using either gray or black because that creates super muddy shadow. So you're much better going with something that has a little bit of a hue in it. I like to go with a grayish purple. Now if you want, you can create a new layer and roughly sketch your light source. So just a circle and then a bunch of rays kind of like this. If you're not used to shading and adding lights and stuff like that, this can be very, very helpful because you're going to see we're just going to have to follow the rays and that's going to tell us where to put our shadows. So feel free to skip that if you don't want to have this kind of crazy lines over your piece. Otherwise, go ahead and draw it and then go back to your shadow layer. And for the brush, you can stick with the 6B pencil. If you have the illustration bundle, you can go with either the basic texture or the shader. It's really your personal preference. I'm going to go with the basic texture. It's a little bit more precise. And since we have, you know, fairly small areas here, this is, I think, what's going to work best. So in order to place your shadows, we're going to start with the cast shadow. And all that means is you're going to follow the sun rays that you have or the light rays that you have until they hit a body part. And then that means this body part would cast a shadow on whatever is behind. So like the head would cast a shadow on the shoulders, the arms will cast a shadow on the hair and so forth. So just following your rays, seeing what it hits and then just creating a shadow behind that. Now, I really encourage you to try and do that on your own, but if you're new to illustration and shading is really too much for you, it's like, girl, I'm, I made it this far in the video, I just wanna copy what you're doing, please, by all means, copy what I'm doing, that's totally fine. <laughs> but if you're feeling like you're up for a challenge, try to do your own shadows and don't rely too much on the video, but if you want to rely on the video, that's totally okay obviously because this is a tutorial <laughs> this is kind of the point of it but anyway <laughs> once you have your cast shadow we're also going to be drawing some form shadow because right now you can see our character is very very flat so we have two types of shadows in general we have cast shadows which are the one that when an object is in front of another one the object that is in front cast a shadow but we also have form shadows that appear when the light just cannot reach a surface because the surface is curving away so in our example here, since the light source is on the right, we're going to be getting a lot of form shadow on the left side. So the form shadows also super important. They tend to be much softer. It's not as harsh of a line. It's just that the light at one point just cannot reach that far. So you're going to be just roughly sketching some shadows. And in the next step, we're going to blend them in. So for now, just focusing on yeah, the opposite side of where your light source is, you're gonna get just form shadows there. Once more, feel free to peek at the video and copy what I'm doing if you want, but otherwise I encourage you to try and do it on your own. And don't forget to hide your light reference layer so you can see if you have all your shadows. And once you're happy with it, we're going to, like I was telling you, blend them in. And when I say blend them in, I'm just talking about the form shadows. The cast shadow, we want to keep them nice and crisp. So you can use the smudge tool, sending it to the stucco brush from the painting panel, and then just going over the edges of your form shadows to really blend them in really nicely. You don't necessarily want to have a perfectly smooth gradient. It's quite nice to have some texture, but maybe not as much as we had when we first placed them. So something just a little bit like this. Awesome. So at this point, we are going to position our character where we want it to be on the canvas. So you can just collapse the character group, maybe selecting the sketch as well, just in case you want to use it for reference later. And then with the arrow tool, you can place your character wherever you want it to be. 
So once that is done, you can go back in the character and selecting the shadow layer, we're going to draw a drop shadow. Since our character is jumping here, we want to really make it seem like it's not standing on the ground. So just something super rough like this. And you can use the smudge tool to blend or smudge or smooth, <laughs> there we go, the ends of the shadow a little bit like this. And with that, we're going to start adding the outlines, which is probably my favorite step. It's so easy, but it really makes everything pop so much. So we're going to create a new layer right below the details layer, and we're going to rename it to highlights. Now this layer, you're going to apply it as the blending mode add, and add is super, super strong. So you're going to lower the opacity around maybe 40 for now, but we can always tweak it later. Just not 100% because otherwise it's going to be like pure white. <laughs> and for your lights, you can use whatever color you want. I like to go with a super bright yellowish orange just to mimic the sun. In terms of brushes, you can stick with our famous 6B pencil, but if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the outlines brush. And here outlines, or outlines, sorry, here highlights are really a personal preference. It really depends on your ad style. I like to draw highlights that are focused on the edges of my character, so it's kind of like you're outlining your outlines with light. But just whatever the sun ray or the, the light is hitting the character, that's where you put your highlight basically. So I personally don't like to have the light source sketch here because I find it to be really overwhelming. But every edge that is facing towards the top right, basically you would outline with this highlight. So again, here, nothing super complicated, but you can see it really brings the character to life. It makes it pop so much more for the background. It also make every single element, oops, <laughs> every single element pop from each other. So, 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 so much more. So again, nothing complicated here. Just make sure you take the time to do it right. I'm going to speed up the video, stop talking once more, and we're going to meet up. I'm going to give you a few tips on certain specific highlights on the face and stuff like that. So once you have your basic highlights done, you can zoom in on the face and add some shininess on the cheeks, a little ovals like this, a little bit on the nose, maybe even above the eyes and the mouth just to make them pop a little bit more. So you can see it's really little details, but it makes the face so much more interesting. And you can also reinforce the texture that you have in the hair by drawing either a smooth line if you are drawing straight hair or like random little curves and spiral like this if you're drawing wavy or curly hair. Now once you have your highlights and shadows mapped out, it's super good idea to go back and play with the opacity of both layers so that you can really get something you like in terms of the blending. I'm gonna up my shadows to really get a lot more contrast and maybe, uh, maybe lower the opacity of my highlights because right now they are really quite intense. So play with it until you get something that you like. And then I'm going to move on to adding some extra light to make the character pop a little bit more because when I was doing the example, I stopped at this stage and I was like, man, this doesn't look, this doesn't look complete. It doesn't look fun enough. So we're going to create a new layer above the shadows. We're going to rename it to extra color and we're going to use the blending mode color dodge. For now, we're going to set the opacity around 50%, but again, we're going to tweak it later. And you're going to color pick the color you used for the background, but you're going to make it super, super light and vibrant. So something a little bit like this in my case. Now, in terms of the brush, you can stick to the trusty forever loved 6B pencil or going back to the basic texture brush if you have the illustration bundle. And here we're going to draw these colors on every plane that it is facing upwards. So it's not necessarily about the light source, it's really just whatever is facing the top of your illustration. So for example, the top of the head here, the hair, um, we're probably going to be having some on the hands, maybe even on the nose and cheeks a little bit. So everything that is facing upwards, you're going to roughly sketch with this crazy color. For now, it's going to look absolutely crazy, but then we're going to blend that in, play with the opacity and the blending modes, and you're going to see it's just going to add so much more life to your character. It's going to make it feel like it's at a party, it's celebrating, it's going to be um, 
just blending in better with the confetti and everything that we're going to add in the final steps of this video. So for now, just focusing on sketching and placing this extra color towards everything, well, on everything that is facing towards the top. So once you've roughly placed everything on the hair, the shirt, the legs, you can go back and play with the opacity, probably lowering it quite a lot. You still want to see it, of course, but you don't want it to look just completely crazy. And you can also go back with the smudge tool, setting it still as the stucco brush from the painting panel and going back and just blending the shadows or shadows, sorry, the extra lights that just look too much. So for example, on the legs here, since my color is very dark, it shows a lot. So I'm just going to blend them in so it just shows a little bit less. Something like this. And you can see now our character is so much more vibrant. There's just a little bit more happening. It's just more fun. And in order to bring the whole illustration together a little bit more, we're going to add this kind of vignette effect in the bottom. So create a new layer that is going to be outside of your character group. Rename it to vignette. And you're going to use for that the blending mode multiply. You're also going to go back to color picking the color you used in the background. And with honestly any brush at this point, it really doesn't matter. You're going to slightly color in, I, I guess, the corners like this. So it really doesn't need to be precise. You just want to add a little bit of color in the bottom corners, kind of like that. You can also go back a little bit at the top, but I would say be very conservative with the top because otherwise it looks kind of heavy and we don't want that. We want the illustration to look super light and airy. Then all you have to do is do what I'm doing right now. So picking the smudge tool to blend these shadows or vignette effect in so that it doesn't look super crazy like it did. I just think, yeah, I think this vignette brings the focus towards the center on our character and also makes the background feel a little bit more interesting because since we're using the stucco brush as our smudge tool, we are building some sort of texture along the way. You can obviously go back and play with the opacity of your vignette layer as needed and yeah, find something that you like. Now this is the stage where if you want to have something written behind your character, this is where you would do it. So you would just create a new layer behind the character group or below the character group, I should say. Pick any brush you want. I'm going to stick with the, or I'm going to go with the outline brush and any color you want, I'm going to go with white and write whatever you want. So here in my example, I had a hundred thousand because I was the hundred thousand um, celebration illustration, but you could draw, for example, the next year not 2020. Wow, I don't want to go back to 2020. No, no, no. 2022 if you want to have a new year card or something like that. So whatever you want to write behind your character, this is where and this is when you would go ahead and write it. And I want to try a little something special here. Since we all drawing characters that are celebrating here, I thought it might be nice to have a celebrate together somehow. So if you're drawing yourself, if you're drawing your OC or even just the same character as I am, make sure to share the results with me on Instagram. Now, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that and when I'm going to do that, but I'm going to share some of your characters in my videos here on YouTube. So if you want to be featured along with other celebrating characters, make sure again to tag me. The info is all on the screen on Instagram so you can tag me as a post um, or as a story, ideally as a post because otherwise the story they disappear within 24 hours. But anyway, just tag me and somehow I'm going to figure out a way to make us all celebrate together. But before then, we're going to add confetti on our character. I have a free brush for you, so let's jump in. So for the confetti here, I thought it might be nice to create a very simple animation. So we're going to go in the wrench icon menu in the canvas option and we're going to activate animation assist, which as you're going to see is going to open up this menu here at the bottom. Now you're going to see a bunch of little squares and if you click play, it's going to look absolutely crazy. <laughs> so that's okay. The way Procreate works for animation is it takes every layer and every group and create a frame from that. So you can see here we have the 2022 frame and then the character group that is going to be a frame as well and then the vignette is going to be a frame. To avoid that, we are going to create a group with the 2022 layer, the character group and the vignette layer. So grouping everything we have so far and we're going to rename this group to fixed. Now make sure that if you have other layers, they are hidden so that they don't show up in the bottom. 
Now sometimes it's a little bit annoying with Procreate when you have a single layer in the animation that has a blending mode, it doesn't show up, like the vignette here doesn't show up. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a layer at the bottom of the fixed group and just fill that in with the background color that we have. So we're essentially creating a copy of the background but within the fixed group. And once that is done, you're going to collapse the fixed group and we're going to set it as the background of our animation. Right now, it is not accessible because it is not right above the background color. So if you have other layers, make sure that the fixed group is the one that is right, right, right above the background color. And then you're going to be able to just tap on it in the frames at the bottom of your screen and activate the background from there. So now if we play, we see that there's nothing moving and we have our background set. So we're going to create a new layer anywhere above the fixed group. We're going to rename this one to confetti, um, I guess confetti one. <laughs> and we are going to draw some confettis. Now here you could hand draw them if you want. It might just take a little bit more time. Otherwise I made a brush. I'm going to show you in just a few seconds. But before that, we're going to pick a color. And you're going to pick a color that is roughly in the range of what you want your confettis to be. The brush that I'm going to give you in a few seconds is going to create some randomness in the color automatically. So just pick something that is, you know, roughly what you want your confettis to be. So pause the video here if you want to go ahead and download the brush. Again, it will be linked in the description below. It is totally free. I know it's a Patreon link, but it's just open to public. So just head over there and you can download it. But if you want to support the channel, it makes a big, big, big difference. And I never really mentioned Patreon in the videos because I want these videos to be available for free. I also want the Patreon to be something that people can voluntarily give to if they want to support me and help me create more free educative art videos. So enough for Patreon, <laughs> it makes me so uncomfortable talking about it. Uh, go ahead and download the brush and once you have the brush, you can just, as you can see here, brush over your piece to automatically add a bunch of random confetti, so random color and random size. And feel free to do as many brushes as you need and you can also use the arrow tool to change the position of your confettis until you get something that you're happy with overall. You can also use the hue saturation brightness tool here to change the colors of your confetti if you want. If you didn't like the color that you picked first, that's always a tool you have available to you. Now to add a little bit more contrast in the confetti, I like to go ahead and manually select white and just color fill some of the confettis, not too many because otherwise it kind of blends in with the white we've written in the background, but maybe, you know, five confettis here and there, making them white. I think it just makes the piece a little bit more interesting. Awesome. So now if we go ahead and click play, we're going to see that we have the confettis, but they are not moving, obviously, because we just drawn them once. So what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate the confetti one layer. It's just swiping the layer towards the left and then clicking duplicate. And you might want to rename this to confetti two <laughs> to avoid the confusion. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that the confettis are starting from the inside and moving to the outside. So obviously here, they're still not moving, but we are going to select the confetti two layer and use the selection tool still set to freehand to select some group of confettis. And then with the arrow tool, we're going to slightly move this group towards the outside of the illustration. Now you might see here, I have come out of the duplicate of the confetti and that is from the settings. So let's open up the setting panels here. You're going to see the three settings here at the top are loop, ping pong, and one shot. These are just for the order in which Procreate is going to play through the frames. So think of the frames like a flipbook. So if you are in loop, it's just going to play from the front to the back of the flipbook and then start over the front. Ping pong is going to play front to back and then just kind of going backwards, I guess. So here we're going to go with loop. Now, frame per seconds, I hate saying that because it's not really the truth, but in this case, it kind of is, I guess would be the speed of the video or the animation. So we're going to go with 10 for now. Now, onion skin frames, this is what we see here. This is just going to give you an idea or a preview of the frames, which is the layers around the layer we're working on right now. So you're going to set it to either one or two, and you're going to play with the opacity until you get something you're happy with. I like, you know, 40% and something like that. That being said, onion skin frame and onion opacity doesn't affect your final result. It's really just as a preview. But having that activated, you're going to be able to then go ahead and select a different group, move it as well, and you're going to be able to see how much you're moving your confettis away from the center. 
So, oops. <laughs> Here, the only thing you're going to be doing is again, selecting a bunch of confettis in a group and then moving that group towards the outside, making sure that you select every single confetti. Otherwise, it's going to look like one is not moving, which is just really, really weird. So now if we click play again, we can see that it's just going back and forth on the confettis. It's starting to move, but it looks absolutely insane. <laughs> so we're going to repeat these steps a few more times, well, uh, quite a few more times to create a smoother movement. So go ahead and duplicate the confetti tool layer, rename it to confetti three, and we're going to do the exact same thing. So using the selection tool to select a group of confetti and then moving it outwards. Now, since we want to show something that resembles, I guess, the explosion confetti starting from the middle, we're going to move the confettis outwards less and less the more we go ahead. So when you think about an explosion, the first distance that the particles travel is super big because there's a lot of movement and a lot of energy when the explosion first happens but the furthest they get away from the explosion itself the slower they start to travel so in order to show that in the animation you're going to move your confettis a lot first and then as you go on and duplicate your confetti layer and keep moving them around you're going to move them less and less so that's why it's important to have the onion skin frame because that way you're able to see how much you're moving the confettis so you're just going to go ahead and repeat this step a few times so duplicate it your confetti three renaming it to confetti four so that we don't get confused and then selecting groups of confetti that you're going to move slightly less than you did for confetti three So you're going to go ahead and repeat the exact same steps until you reach confetti 5. Confetti 5, you're going to do the same thing. So just moving the confettis towards the outside just a little bit less than before. But you're also going to randomly select some confettis on the outside to make them move differently than the group. So right now, it's, it looks like we have just big groups that are moving all together. But since the confettis are getting further and further away from each other, you also want to have some random ones that move slightly differently. So just selecting maybe five confettis uh, here and there towards the outside and moving them a little bit differently. And you can see here, it makes it look a little bit more fluid. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing with confetti six. So duplicating confetti five to get a copy of what we just did and then moving confettis around. But we're going to lower the opacity of confetti six around, you know, 80% doesn't need to be super precise so that the confetti look like they are starting to fade away and eventually disappear. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and move your confettis. These are probably going to move very, very, very little. So just a tiny little bit. And on confetti six, you're also going to select five or so confettis towards the outside of the piece to move them randomly to add a little bit more realism in your piece. I say realism, but honestly, just more fluidity in the movement. And if we click play here, we're going to see that it is moving and starting to fade away. So we're going to keep the confetti moving and fade away some more. So, oops, I forgot to rename this one to confetti six. I'm gonna rename this real quick and then we're going to duplicate confetti six to create, you guessed it, confetti seven. So confetti seven, we're going to lower the opacity of it even more. So I would say mm, around 40% maybe, but again, it doesn't need to be super precise. 42 is precise enough. And same thing here, we're going to move the confettis around, but even less than before. And you're also going to pick five, seven, something like that confettis towards the outside to randomly move them to add a little bit more randomness in the movement. Now, once you're done with that, you can click play. You can see we really see that the confettis are starting to fade away. So what we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate confetti seven. We're going to rename it to confetti, oops, not done fetti, confetti, <laughs> confetti eight. And confetti eight, we're not going to have it move. We're just going to lower the opacity down to 15% or so. And if we test it out now, we can see that the confettis are really fading away, but they're not quite disappearing. So to have them disappear, all we're going to do is we're going to create a blank layer about confetti eight, so just a layer with nothing on it. And you can see now the confetti disappear. So this is pretty good, but it looks like the confettis are starting from mid-air, like they're not really exploding from the middle. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate the layers and kind of reverse the animation a little bit. So go ahead and duplicate confetti one and then you're going to pick the lowest version of the two copies, so the one that is at the bottom of your layer list. And going back with the selection tool, you're going to be able to select your confetti and this time moving them inwards quite a lot. So the reason we could not start with the confettis at the middle is that, well, if we draw them all in one big bunch, we're not going to be able to separate them. So we have to kind of draw them when they're already far enough from each other so that we're able to have them fly away from each other separately and then it's really easy to go ahead and just select layers well select confettis and move them in closer so that they get to the center and start overlapping each other because if we had done that from the start it would have been really really hard to separate them so you're just going to duplicate your confetti one layer as many times as needed always selecting the one at the bottom and then just selecting groups of confettis bringing them towards the center of your character more and more every time. At this stage, you're going to be getting a bunch of overlaps within the confettis, which is exactly what we want. We ultimately want to end up with a big bunch of confettis in the middle. So you might need to duplicate your confetti one layer, I don't know, four or five times every time. Again, moving your confettis even more and making sure that every single time you do that, you select the copy that is the lowest in the list. Otherwise, the animation is going to be all out of order. And now we can see if we click play, it looks like the confettis are starting from the middle and it's just exploding outwardly until they disappear in thin air. But now this is a little bit overwhelming because the animation just loops and loops and loops and loops. So if you go ahead and click on the last frame, so the frame without confetti, you're going to be able to set a hold duration, which means this frame is going to stay on the screen for longer. Here, for example, if we put 10, since we have the frame per second speed as 10, it means it's going to stay with no confetti for one second. It's a little bit too long for my liking, so I'm going to set the hold, um, frame hold duration at five, so half a second in my case. But again, here, feel free to experiment and find something that you like. I just think having a little bit of a pause really helps, otherwise it just looks so intense. Now, in order to keep your file organized, it might be a good idea at this stage to rename the all the confetti one uh, layer to confetti minus one, confetti minus two, confetti minus three, and so forth. So feel free to do that on your own if you want, because we are going to need to duplicate all of the layers in order to export this animation if you want to use it, for example, on Instagram. Because for Instagram and Facebook, if I remember correctly, you need at least three seconds long video in order to be able to post them as videos. So in order to know how long your animation is, you can just go ahead and count your layers. And then you are going to take the number of layers and divide that by the frame per second. And this is going to give you the length of your animation in second. Now, if you have under three seconds, which is probably going to be the case, don't worry, we're going to really easily be able to duplicate our layers in order to have a longer animation. But before duplicating your layers, make sure that you rename all the confetti one layers appropriately, otherwise it's gonna get very, very, very confusing. Now, in order to duplicate your layers really quickly, you can just swipe them all towards the right with one finger to select them all. And then you're going to gra drag them onto your canvas. You're gonna see it's gonna say plus 12 or whatever. And that's going to create a copy. If you're lucky, they're gonna be all in the right order, which means after, you know, confetti eight or something, it's gonna go back to confetti two and so forth. Otherwise you might need to rearrange them. And if you go back in the bottom here, you're gonna see that you basically just have a copy of all your frames added to uh, the end. So now if we click play, the animation is going to play the exact same as before, but it's going to be longer. So that's a little bit annoying, but it's just a little trick in order to post your animation on Facebook and Instagram, just kind of duplicating your layers. You can then go in the share menu, so in the wrench icon, selecting animated mp4 at the bottom and making sure that the frames per second that is here in that menu is the same as you have in the settings. Now just click on export here at the top, which is going to export your video. You're then going to be able to select where you want to save it or send it. So if you click save video, it's going to save it in your camera roll. So with your other general videos that you have on your iPad. And once that is done, you can just go back to Instagram if you want to share it. Just click as you would regularly share a video. It's going to be there. Same process as usual. 
And if you enjoyed this video and want more digital art tutorials, I highly recommend you check out this playlist. It is my collection of all my favorite tutorials that I've done since creating the channel. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.